know. We're going to try to get some shots today. Today I'm doing a review. We've got the Pentax K10D. See there? And it's a double review. So we got a, a lens we're doing today as well, a 18 to 250 Tamron lens. So it's like 1030. I, I figured a lot of the fog would be uh, cleared out by now, but as you can see, it's not. But we can still get some good shots here. We'll start off by getting a shot of that over there and we'll see what we get. It's always tricky in the fog to see I think that might need to be so uh play that back and we're going to hit info and see the histograms like right in the middle so that's pretty good we'll stick with that oh there's some people walking that might kind of add to the shot you can hear the buzziness of this uh tamron lens yeah not bad now this camera is from 2006 so the um the monitor is is not all that good but you can pull up the histogram as lit like I got there and you can go through different options hope you could see that um, but overall that this uh, this camera I did a video recently comparing this to other 2006 cameras and this one kind of won hands down so with it with the price tag just being just over a hundred dollars for the body I strongly recommend it I actually have this for sale and this lens for sale on my eBay store. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to my store below. And also a coupon code for an extra 5% off. That doesn't sound like much, but that's off, uh, off stuff that's already on sale too. So I think both of these are on sale on, in my store. So, All right, let's get back to it. So uh, this goes on SDHC cards. Uh, the card slot's a little annoying to get to right there but not too bad a uh, cool thing about this uh, is I like the way the button setup is here you've got the where you could select your focus type right here your select your point or do the auto or whatever then up here you have your uh, ways to check how it's metering your metering modes so you could just change that right there kind of a, a unique uh, unique way and, and then um, You've got all your basic DSLR modes that you would have on most cameras. It's got the classic raw button there on the side. You can set your uh, type of focus here, continuous or single. And uh, this camera uh, feels really good in my hands. It weighs uh, just under two pounds, a pound and, uh, pound and three fourths. Let me see if I can sneak up on this bird and get some shots here. He's I'm not very stealth, am I? <laughs> All right, come here. I'm gonna. Oh, 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 oh my goodness! Miss it! Oh, missed it! Oh, he's laughing at me. You hear that? Oh well. Let's get some other shots. We'll get some shots of this goose poop here on the on the uh, lake there. Oh, that's a good shot. We're at uh, f seven one. 7.1 there we go that's a nice nice little shot there so uh, on this on this lens it goes from 18 to 250 as like I was saying so if you don't know on the Tamron uh, how to tell if it's made for a crop sensor camera or a full frame camera the DI would be made for uh, full frame cameras and DI I, I two Roman numeral two would be for uh, crop sensor cameras made for it. But of course, you could use a DI lens on a crop sensor camera. So, um, so if you've never used one of these lenses that has a huge focal range like that, they're really good for uh, if you're at a theme park or something like that. You don't want to bring a backpack full of prime lenses or something like that. You've got everything in one lens. So um, that's the advantage of these. The disadvantage of them, it's going to be soft in there somewhere. You can't cover 18 to 250 without something being a little softer in there. So, uh, but uh, as you can see by the images, these are all like full, uh, full straight out of camera. So 
it's not too bad. If you find that spot that is a little bit soft, all you need to do is stop down. If you're at like F5.6, maybe stop down to, to F8 and you'll get that sharp sharpness, a little bit of sharpness back. I like these trees right here. Let's get a shot of that. Not bad. Looks like I brightened it up a little bit. I got my... It's pretty cool when you're in this select mode here for the autofocus. You can just move it back and forth. You can't see in there, but it highlights you and you can move it, pick, pick the focusing point you want. So it's a nice, nice feature to have. And on, on some of the other later, um, later Pentax models, it's a little harder to, uh, you have to hold in a button to get to that select point and then you can move it. This, if you've got it already selected in here, you just look through the viewfinder and move it around. So that is a very nice feature of this camera. This camera has 10 megapixels, and you're saying, wow, these newer cameras have a lot more megapixels, but 10 megapixels is good for just about anything. You could uh, definitely easily put stuff on the web, and you could even blow up some prints with this. Not over, you know, super huge prints, but uh, still, this could definitely, definitely uh, do the job for you. We've got some uh, clover there. Let's get a shot of that. Trying to get some since it's so foggy out here trying to get some stuff with some color i did take a picture of this mural earlier you can check it out it's got a lot of color in it so you can see what the what this camera and lens can do as far as colors all right this this kind of looks cool let me see if i can do this get that Well, I wasn't very level, but you get the point of that. Well, there's typically some spider webs up here that might have some dew on them since it's so foggy. So this uh, camera actually cost a thousand dollars when it was released. So if you get it around a hundred dollars, that's a real bargain. The only where, only thing that might suffer a little bit on this compared to nowadays cameras is mainly the uh, ISO performance so if you want to get like a, a fast prime or something to help out uh, with your low life if you're doing low light stuff that would be handy that 50 millimeter f1.8 the DA would be a perfect match with this body and this is where I do my snake photography you know it's, it's de December 26 and it's like almost 60 degrees out here right now I'm in shorts of course um, yeah, there's usually, there's usually cobwebs and or spider webs over in here, but not today. I do like this, how the fog leads into this, uh, little area right here. Let's try to get a shot of that, that the bank right there. If I don't fall, we could test the ruggedness out if I fall. <laughs> All right. Not bad. So the, uh, I'll go back to this lens again. So it's 18 to 250, sorry about the cars, but the, uh, well it doesn't say on here, where does it say? The, I can, I can tell you right now. Okay, uh, at 250, the lowest aperture is 6.3, and then all the way down at 18 is 3.5. Oh, it says it right there. All right, so uh, 3.5 to 6.3. It's got a 62 millimeter filter thread. The model number is A A18. In case you're curious, I think I have it, this on sale for $111 right now. So that's not bad for a lens that's going to cover that huge focal length. Let's open it. Oh, there's spider web. There's got to be a better one than that. Oh, here's one. Let's see what I can do here. Eh, oh, here we go. There's a nice one. Now, I might have to. Let's see if it's going to. Yep. 
Yeah, that's the only thing about doing these. You hear a buzzy that is, but well, I don't know if you can or not, but we're gonna switch this to manual mode. Or manual manual focus, I should say. God, it's like kind of stiff, even though I've got it selected here. It's not very uh sorry about the cars. I need to change my ISO. Okay, so to change your ISO, hit this function button, and then it brings up this where you could have different options. So I'm gonna hit over. I'm at uh, ISO 16. Let's put it to ISO 800, and we'll see what this looks like. It was on auto ISO. So yeah, this gives me my shutter speed. A real boost there. Mm, come on, focus. There we go, not the best picture, but you can see. So now this lens, like I was saying, it's the manual focus on it is very stiff. So be aware of that, but that gives you a what uh, ISO 800 looks like. So you can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back and go, we'll go ISO 400. Let me see what this, uh, it's gonna be like. Switch it back to auto focus. Get out of somebody's way here. Not bad. Um, if you have any questions about this camera, just leave a comment below or this lens. But I do recommend it. Oh, I didn't show you the battery. So the battery's got that same thing like the the K1, if you're familiar with that, so you have to pull that thing. And this is a different battery than the the newer one, so I had to actually buy a charger because it didn't come with a charger. If you are a beginning photographer, I would strongly recommend this camera. If you are an intermediate, advanced photographer, I would still recommend this camera as like a secondary camera because you probably already have a uh, newer camera, but uh, it definitely, it definitely holds up today in, in 2022 almost. So, yeah, check that out. I've done this shot before, but one more. And it, I mean, it even focused through that fog, it, it was able to focus. So, go out there and get this camera. You should also get this lens if you're looking for something with a long focal length. It's very lightweight. I don't know how many elements are in there, but I expected it, when I picked it up, I expected it to weigh more. Uh, I'm finding it pretty sharp for a, for a third party lens. So, thanks for watching. My feet are getting wet. You get my fishing rod. I saw some fish out there jumping. Give, give you some bonus footage. Oh, look at me. Look at them. Those are those, um, what are they called? Deer, deer killers? Let's see if I can get close enough to get a shot. Stealth, I am not. Oh, man. All right, I'm gonna go get my fishing rod.